Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about what are statistical assumptions and why we call them assumptions. So to start off with here, every model has specific conditions we need for our mathematical equations and our statistical theory to hold. So I'll give you guys two examples in this video, and I'll talk about kind of the testing a little bit, and then at the end here I'll talk about why we still call them assumptions after we actually test them. So the first example here is when you use linear regression here, um, or any model in general, a lot of times the assumption, for example in OLS, is that the residuals have to be normally distributed. So the theory behind this is that if they're normally distributed with a mean of zero, then we know that they are random. And so since they are random, we've taken out all of these signals or all of the portions of the model um, that explain what we're trying to model. One common test for this is called the Shapiro-Wilkes test here, and this is going to um, test for normality. So when you build your model, you put in your input variables, so like your x1, x2, x3, you run like an OLS regression and you predict y, um, you're gonna end up with some residuals from the model. We want to know if these are normally distributed. If they are, then we can actually say, yes, this is a good model because they are random and independent here, and so therefore we can use it. If the residuals are not normally distributed, so we don't have kind of this randomness, there's something we're missing in the model and we need to go back and adjust it, but we can say at this point it's not a good model. So the Shapiro-Wilkes test is going to have um, your null hypothesis, which is going to be um, that the data is normally distributed, okay? And then that means that the alternative hypothesis here is going to be um, that your data is not normally distributed. And so you can use a statistical package to run this. So you can use you know, R, SAS, Python, um, MATLAB, anything that you wanna use, and you can run this test on the residuals of your model. And we're gonna use here hypothesis testing here. So let's say our p-value uh, threshold, which is typically used is 0 0.05. If we end up running this test and we end up with a p-value, less than 0 0.05, um, we say that we reject the null hypothesis. And if we reject the null hypothesis here, so H naught, um, we would say that it is not normally distributed, okay? If we ended up with a p-value that is greater than 0 0.05, what we like to say in statistics is we fail to reject H naught. So when we say that we fail to reject H naught, what we're saying is it's not that we accept H naught and that is the truth and we believe it. We're just saying that we fail to reject it. We don't have enough evidence to reject H naught. And so we're gonna just believe in the fact, based on our test, that the data is gonna be normally distributed and we can use this model. Okay, so let's give a second example here. Okay, so for the second example here, we're gonna do the ADF test, which is the augmented Dickey Fuller. I'm just gonna write out ADF for simplicity here, um, but this is going to be testing stationarity. This is a crucial property for time series. Um, again, I'm not gonna cover all the details. I have other videos as well, which I'll link below or maybe put a link above, um, and you can actually go watch videos on what stationarity is. But again, this is another assumption we need in time series to make a model that is stable and that the calculations that we use to estimate the coefficients in the model are going to be accurate. So for the ADF test, our null hypothesis here, our H naught, is going to be um, that it is not stationary, okay? And that makes our alternative hypothesis going to be stationary. So again, we'll do some hypothesis testing. Okay, so in this case, if our p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject H naught. So this means that we are going to more or less accept H null, meaning that we think the data is stationary. The alternative here is if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject H naught, which means we're in a way going to accept the fact that our data is not stationary. So the reason that the wording fail to reject is important and why it's always used in statistical books is that we cannot say we accept the fact that H naught is true, okay? The way that hypothesis testing is conducted is that we have some evidence, we wanna test it and see um, 
if we have some thresholds, like a 95% confidence interval, right? So that p-value of 0.05, um, there's a 5% chance that we're wrong. The reason that these are called assumptions is, is because even after you test it, there's still a 5% chance that you're wrong. So even though you test it, so say we test our data here. So for example, in the Shapiro-Wilkes test, say that we think the data is normal, right? So the H0 is normal. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in a way we're saying we believe in it, but it's still an assumption. There's still a 5% chance that you're wrong, which is why it's an assumption. So when you do modeling and you run your tests, you need to realize that you're 95% confident when you use the p-value of 0.05 that this is correct and the model is true and we can use the methods and the theory that we're using in statistics to model it in this way. You should always be cognizant that it's an assumption. We are assuming that there's a 5% chance that we're wrong, okay? We're making the assumption that we're gonna use, you know, the outcomes of that test. But we know it's an assumption because there's always a possibility that we are wrong, the test is wrong, and we did not pick up the true results. So that's why we call them assumptions, is because even after testing, there's still an assumption. But the reason we run the test is that it gives us a confidence or some confidence interval that we are doing the right thing, that the model is stable, or the model you know, meets some types of requirements, whatever the assumptions are required to use that modeling structure. So anyways, I hope you guys learned something new. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. Thank you.